This is Helios Creed, and you're listening to the Jack Blood Show. Hi, this is Helios Creed of Chrome, Illuminati of Chrome, and you're listening to the Jack Blood Show. This is Helios Creed, Illuminati of Chrome, and you are listening to the Jack Blood Show. Everything you need to hear and feel. Same big club they used to beat you over the head with all day long when they tell you what to believe. All day long, beating you over the head in their media, telling you what to believe, what to think, and what to buy. Two, one, three. Q announcer. And starring the mad prophet of the airways. Thank <laughs> you. 
Welcome back to All Thought Criminals, News of the State. And feral humans wherever you are. You're listening to The Jack Blood Show. I'm your narrator and radio gun, Jack Blood. Our guest today, May 16th, 2014, is Helios Creed. He is a living rock and roll legend. After joining Chrome in the year 1977, Helios Creed became widely considered as the godfather of industrial psychedelic rock, inspiring such bands as the Butthole Surfers, Einstein de Neubotten, Nine Inch Nails, and even my own band. Helios Creed went on to a stunning solo career, releasing over 20 records as a solo artist, and Damon Edge died in 1995. Chrome is reformed with old and new members and are right now touring Europe this June through July of 2014. Today, Helios is joined by his guitar player, Lou Minotti, and that's right, they are serious truthers. Here we go. All right, so without further ado, we've got the one and only Helios Creed and Lou Minotti from Chrome. Thanks, guys, for joining us. I appreciate you being on the Jack Let Show. Uh, yeah. Yeah, glad to be here. You guys are about to head out to Europe, so we'll talk about Chrome, we'll talk about your solo music, Helios, and just talk about, you know, things that are going on in the world. But for all of our listeners, you know, we're on satellite, we're on internet, we're on radio in Europe, all throughout Europe. Tell people about the tour, when it starts, and what's going to happen. Yeah, oh, we got to get the word out. Yeah, our, our first show is on the uh, 21st, Jack. Um, in Munich, I think. In Munich, yeah. Please, everybody, uh, spread the word. Chrome is coming to Europe. We didn't have a big uh, advertisement campaign, so you guys could spread the word. Would be very, yeah. would be very grateful. We're counting on people who are into what we're doing, not yeah. only musically but you know socially. Yeah, word of mouth. And I like the whole. I like where your uh, show is coming from too. We're also into the whole conspiracy thing. Even if we don't know Jack shit, just out of pure interest. You well, know? you'll you'll know Jack Blood, and that's all that will be important. Well, Jack, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's Germany, great. that you're going to Italy, you're going to Spain, you're going to France, you're going back to Germany, Austria, Czech Republic, that should be awesome. Denmark, Norway, that should be really cool. Helsinki, Stockholm, Gothenburg, and back to Germany, back to Holland, and then ending in London on the 14th of yeah. June. Man, <laughs> when, when is the last time you guys played as Chrome in Europe? It must have been a, a while never, now. Never, never, I never happened. Right. Damon did a few unsuccessful things, but uh, <laughs> the Spain show is kind of legendary. Yeah, right? but uh, I, I don't know. I think he canceled half of his tour, so it never really happened, you know. And believe me, this is we are dedicated to the sound. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's going to sound like. Alien soundtracks. It's going to sound like Half Machine Lip Moves. Yeah. It's going to sound like Feel It Like a Scientist. Oh, yeah. we got your amp over there. We got another, one of these. We're really getting his old sound, our yeah. drum sound. We're even having the, the original amplifiers so that that sound is there. Loud. Yeah, that's a lost art. The new CD or album, uh, I know people still buy records, Helios Creek Chrome, Feel It Like a Scientist is out and coming out now, and that's what you guys are going to be promoting. I can't believe you haven't been out to Europe. This is the only time properly done Europe, and I hope people really appreciate what we're doing. I mean, because we're really trying to bring the uh, part of Chrome that they've been yearning for, you know? The original hits like Firebomb and, and In a Dream and Danger Zone to the brand new stuff. I mean, we're going to play all the ones they've been yearning to hear all these years, if they're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, I'll be begging you to come to Atlanta, my new hometown, but as you I know... Have- Atlanta, a lot of times it's Helios Creed. Yeah, I, this is purely selfish, Helios. I oh, want no, you to come right. now. <laughs> there's a lot. There could be selfishness involved because how often do you get to a chance to get together and do these things? You know. Absolutely. Well, as I mentioned to you off the air, and who's going to remember any of this? I just remember because we opened for Helios Creed in Seattle, upstairs at some bar somewhere, and I think all the people. <laughs> All of the, yes, I, I, no, that caused me pain for life. But all of the people there, I think, all went on to be future rock stars. I don't even know if there were just, like, people there. They were all musicians, almost, out yeah. there to see you. And what an amazing show that was. So, but you know the, the how it works. You know, if you want to be good and big and, and make a lot of money in this country, you got to be like Jimi Hendrix and Nirvana, and you got to make it in Europe. So this is the time, finally, for you guys. You're going to be <laughs> huge. 
Yeah, I, I, I have a good feeling. We'll you knock know. on wood. <laughs> we're gonna bring, we're gonna bring them the best that we have. Is all I could say, and I think they're gonna appreciate it. Well, I appreciate it. I could list, I could play it all day. Without it's me fun. doing the grand overall, what is it, almost 40-year history of Chrome, yeah, yeah, it started in the 70s. So talk about this. You guys are known as the godfathers of industrial music. Later came the Swans and Einstein's and Neubotten, and, and now we know, of course, Nine Inch Nails. Now we just all take it for granted. So start us off in the beginning. What was it like playing that kind of music for really what would have been the first time? Well, I'll tell you a few funny stories. It was around the, the time of air supply, bands like that, you know, where the big... The doors. Uh, well, the doors were gone. I would have welcomed the doors. You know? <laughs> I mean, it was really a lame time in music. I mean, disco, and I don't even want to tell you about how bad the rock was. And we just felt really, you know, punk rock just started to come out, and we gravitated lot to that like a magnet and it inspired us to do alien soundtracks one thing it had to be was wacky and psychedelic like so i knew me and damon both knew that but we also wanted to come at it from a punk angle i go that's what we got to do because even if somebody starts doing this we're going to have a jump on them you know and you know somebody's going to start doing everything sooner or later so, yeah, we, we did that, and that was our main thing from the very beginning. Where does it come from? There, I guess if I look at your Wikipedia page, you know I'm banned from Wikipedia, by the way, so <laughs> you're in the right place. Yeah. I think you described it something as listening to Black Sabbath on headphones on LSD is yeah, kind of where it started. On acid, on acid, or yeah. Sunshine. <laughs> yeah, on the best acid. I went to a Black Sabbath concert, and I knew I wanted to be making rock music, and I really loved Black Sabbath, but when I saw them live, I got really scared, you know, <laughs> and uh, I, I was got really paranoid. I was a young kid, you know, but it really affected me, and, and, and my friend found me, saw that I was freaking out, you know, and I sat next to this guy, and I go, man, I need to find somebody to talk to, because... Back then, the acid was really good, and I was all by myself. I didn't even know where I was. And I sat next to this guy, and and, it's, and he's freaking out worse than me, you know. His wife's with him, you know. And he goes, I'll take you home. Don't worry, John. And I go, great, you know. I'm all alone, and I, I'm at Black Sabbath concert. I don't even know where I'm going to sit. You know what I mean? Then I ran into my friend, and we got great seats, and it just all came together together after that you know even though i had a bad trip i knew what kind of music i wanted to make you know that's where, where the idea formed you know i want to make a band like black sabbath the really solid rhythm section but totally wacky on the top and i kept that dream in my head and i looked for people to try to want to do it with me but nobody wanted to do that I met Damon. Well, so you see kids out there, you can have a bad trip and still get something very positive out of it. <laughs> That's the whole point. A bad trip always has a positive side, if you look. And uh, it worked for us, you know, because Chrome isn't a bad trip. It, it, it sort of feels like it, but the <laughs> point is, it's going to zoom you right into the space, you know yeah, what I mean? There's enlightenment at the end of it. Yeah, there's there's a lot of enlightenment. Of your own kind, you know, I'm not talking about God or anything like that. You know, however you feel your enlightenment works, you know. But the truth is, you won't know what's good if you haven't experienced the bad, right? Exactly. That's. I think that's a good thing, you know, because, like, the whole psychedelic thing, which never faded, I knew was important, and we had to keep it going in the right direction. You know, like the whole flowery hippie thing, everything's okay, is a bunch of crap. You know, really, you got to have a nice, good, bad trip to really, really go out into space. What I learned <laughs> in my years of doing acid as a kid, I, I read a lot of the Timothy Leary trips and, you know, all mm. about how acid works and how not to get fooled. I, I, I wouldn't, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't even say it was anything like that. Are you having today. a flashback I'm, right now, Helios? Are you having a fly? I am kind of too, you know. <laughs> Jesus earlier. Christ! And I'm from the younger gen. I'm I'm half his age, so I'm from I'm 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 uh, you know corroded by my generation's version yeah. of LSD. But I I it was so bad. I was almost thinking of uh, becoming a chemist and making some really good stuff 
to show people what the good stuff was like. Yeah, that's Helios. He makes it and makes music for you to listen to while you're on it. <laughs> uh, it's a package deal. I had an idea, right? Lick the left corner, the left-hand corner of the record before you stick the record on, you know? Mm. Wait about 15 minutes. It's, it gives a whole new meaning to scratch and sniff. But I had just had an idea. Yeah, you gave right. me a great idea. I could pitch this show for sure. It's a show that would be Breaking Bad plus Helios Creed, and you would mix the two. Right, right. Well, it's not too far from the truth at times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's well, funny you mentioned adventure. Breaking yeah. Bad. <laughs> no, well, we keep it. We keep our business clean, but life is a bad trip enough sometimes, and it's it's pretty entertaining. <laughs> in well, we, in one magazine, we were, we were called the most drug-addled band in the world. Second you know? most drug-addled band. Well, the, Captain Beefheart. Yeah, well, he's <laughs> dead, so that makes it the only yeah. living drug-addled band. Yeah. And so, but we we've overcome a lot to yeah. to make sure that we can deliver for the current situation. Oh, people try to get a stone before we go up, you know, because they think we're all about drugs and I go, "No, no, we can't do that. That's for you to do." Well, we, and we play for yeah. you while you're doing your thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. well, the, they as you have made the point, Helios, the drugs of today are not the drugs of yesterday, and I would be very careful you kids at home and wait till you're 18 to start experimenting. See, I have to say that kind of thing for sure. Yeah, I would I would yeah. that's I I'm glad you did because I have no idea what's out there. I worry about it, you know. Stick and with the classics. If I had a son or a daughter that was into drugs really heavy right now, I'd really want to know what they're doing, you know, because it's not like when we were kids. You could pretty much know what you're getting, yeah. This so, little bath salts thing is terrifying. Yeah. No, yeah, isn't it? Like and, and not only that, you know, I worry that – the kids play video games too much, and maybe the drugs were better than the video games. Uh, I mean, the combination is kind of scary. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah. you know, that's some monarch shit right there. <laughs> Ooh, a monarch reference. You know, my first concert ever, I was nine years old. It was 1972, and it was Black Sabbath. So this is oh, great. Hey. You guys are click, man. <laughs> How was it? You got to tell me. Can you imagine being nine years old and seeing that? In the I, just, I don't know how they let you in. Yeah, well, they did. They let me into Led Zeppelin, I think, that year too. So, <laughs> so how was it at nine years old? I mean, did you get a good? So you just yeah. Did, was it was well, it a good you know, show? It definitely did change my life. And anything good, every time I've seen Iggy Pop, it changed my life. Every time I've seen y'all, it changed well, my life. Just, so you know, my first real concert, uh, you know, when I was this was in the nineties. My first concert, my old man took me to see uh, Iggy Pop, and, and I didn't know who he was. And a Slash walks out to rip it up during the show. I said, "This Iggy Pop guy's. I should check him out." And I was like twelve years old then. You know, really like, cool. Yeah, I would have loved to seen concerts like that when I was twelve. You know, oh, it you like it. It, it makes you realize there's this thing you can aspire to. Yeah. Greatness. Well, now kids, they're nine years old, and they get to go see Justin Bieber for the first time. Well, what about what do you got? What must you think, Helios, of the new music, especially popular music today? Because at least in the '60s and the '70s, and even in the '80s, the popular music at least had something going for it. But today, it just, I'm well, sorry, maybe I'm just too old, and I'm shaking my cane and telling people to get well, off my I, lawn. But it seems it's completely valueless. I kind of see Justin Bieber as sort of like bubblegum music. You know, well, it's. And that was very popular around the time. I remember bubblegum was very popular before Chrome. There was an era where there it was, you know, what do you call that? Those guys in the bus, you know? The, the, the Partridge uh, Family. Partridge Family, yeah. Yeah, they were very popular. And the other one, they even made another show just like it. And At least that was, was like... A, that That kind of reminds me of Justin Bieber in a way. But that because, had soul and it was a sign of the times and it had spirit. This yeah. this. But yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what what he's saying. Even Justin Bieber, you know, I mean, that looks good next to Justin Bieber, you know. That's just a, a purely. I think is what he's trying. At to this say. point, there's very little difference between marketing and music, and the music seems more of an afterthought. But I've never cases. listened to Justin Bieber. I don't even know what he does. What does he do? I, yeah, we don't pollute ourselves <laughs> with, with 
Have you ever? I mean, you being you, you had to have listened to him. Well, I, mean, well I, I do admit I listened to about half a song once. I think that's all I needed to hear. That's quite all frankly, you no, know, yeah. But it's I mean, not I, just him. I always pick on him, and it's Lady Gaga, and it's it's all yeah. of it. It's just horrible. It's, it's horrible. Sad, I, I know. Kids are I, I did it, see. Yeah, she she likes to get as outrageous as she can. Yeah, they're, they're toying with the children in that way. I don't like it. Like, what is there of substance? You know. There's Dave Grohl, it seems like. He's like the big advocate for real rock and roll now. You know, mm-hmm. and I really respect it. Dave Grohl, the drummer of Nirvana. He's the guy that just oh, seems yeah. to be saying, like, I know what we're kind of talking about. Just, like, you know, kids, I ran there, there's him. this shit, and then there's real music and art, you know. And that's Well, what, that's what I, I wouldn't worry about. about it too much because, you know, I was talking to Justin Bieber's producer. <laughs> he, <laughs> he was, he was. He doesn't even like him, you know. I mean... <laughs> The guy is just sort of here today. Brian gone. Ross. Yeah, yeah, Brian Ross. But don't say anything. Yeah, I mean, maybe you shouldn't have said <laughs> that. Well, he's a, he also yeah. helped. Don't say anything. anymore. Don't say anymore. Uh, <laughs> hey, I live in Atlanta. He just moved here, and a radio station was threatening to, like, burn down his house the first day. So, I mean, you know, it's just how it goes. I'm sorry for the guy, actually. The Are you talking guy. about Brian? No, no, Justin Bieber. And the thing is, oh. the point that Lou made is great because – it's true, and this is what I always say. Even Bobby Sherman, I mean, just the, we had the Jacksons. The, that was bubblegum yeah. pop back in the day. And even the Partridge yeah, family, they rocked. Oh. Those guys all rocked. You ever see the Osmonds do uh, Crazy Horses? I, I, that was I, nuts. Because I was sort of a kid, but it, it I was fight. a kid yeah. doing acid. I wasn't chewing a lot of gum. <laughs> well, those were desperate times also. You had fucking, uh, part of my French, Vietnam. Well, you know, that, you know. You had strife in the world, and, and these people are bringing some kind of heart back into it, whereas now it's just, it's purely, it's like, here's something you think has is is real and has soul, but it's just artifice, you know? Yeah. Speaking of Illuminati, have you picked up on some of this uh, Freemasonic, Illuminati, like, backdrop, signatures, like poses? I, to, uh, I lived a block. Olympics, dude. Oh, the Olympics. Tell them. Tell okay, them. when I saw... This is all very real to us, too. When I saw the London Olympics, I was working at a bar, and I looked up at the TV, and I see the London Olympics, and there's all this weird Disney witchcraft shit going on. And then I look, and above the, the, the stadium are these black pyramids. And I'm like, there you go, dude. And I, I read later, it turns out there's 13 of these things sitting, you know what I'm saying. And this is all esoteric. We kind of go there with people who are on our plane, you know. Yeah, well, I know, and I cover that stuff, and I have experts come, and, and they pick it apart. But for your fans that might be listening to this for the first time, I mean, you can feel free to expound on any of this. Well, H here has a story because he used to live right by... Yeah, I lived a block or two from the, uh, you know, Bohemian Grove headquarters, and you know what they did there, right? Yes, they they yeah. pretend to sacrifice children, run around naked in the woods, and then discuss policy behind our backs. And I, yeah. I've known about friends of friends that disappeared, not knowing what happened to them. And what they do is they, I've heard the stories where they get guys, you know, kind of fucked up and knock them out, and then they burn yeah. them for sacrifice. You yeah, know, Shanghai, and there nobody, nobody misses them because they're like next to street people or something, you know. But uh, yeah, I lived about a block or two away from that shit. And those are the people that run the country, you know, and um, the world actually. Yeah. yeah, the world. And the beyond. Elite, yeah, yeah. It's, if you're into, you know, good things, you realize who's running the show. Yeah. And it's really disturbing, you know, to you if you're a good person. I will say one thing, though, that right now there seems to be a sort of shakedown happening because uh, you won't hear it because it's being buried by all this you NBA, uh, the Sterling shit. But Brian Stinger got busted for some kind of child pornography ring. And one lawyer is assembling victims and all of these things. And he's saying... There's a he, he is basically exposing this powerful network of child sex slavery within Hollywood, which is a frightening thing. They do thing, the worst. These people yeah. at the Bohemian Grove that run the world, they do the worst to children, to whatever. It's, they sacrifice to the, their their dark or, yeah. overlord. You and know we what say I mean? this at a risk to ourselves as well. Yeah. Anyone who opens up about this, it's... But, but, but you know, you got to go against it. you got to speak out about it. We're pushing it, that know? change of the tide. That, that We're, we're kind of pushing that sort of awareness. And it's, it's sort of in the album subliminally as well. There's there's references. You know? This this album's going to be scary like a Black Sabbath album, except scarier because it's no fucking kidding around. You know what I mean? With a That's what I... Yeah, that's what I want you to get ready for because it's intense, you know. But like all Chrome albums, it rocks. 
We still have our song. Well, it rocks, and it has a, a message that you have to you have to discern. And it's, it's funny, Lou, that you mentioned Brian Singer. He's the X Men director because we just talked about him. I think on the last podcast we did. Uh -huh. And we totally laid all that out, and we've kind of been following this Franklin cover-up, Bohemian Grove stuff for years. You know what's interesting, though, is that when Bohemian Grove started like 150 years ago, they had a big Buddha in there, and it was just a place to go hang out and get drunk and do whatever, you know? Now they have a giant owl over there, and I had a friend that worked there, and he got me pictures from inside it, and, and it was amazing. In fact, he would call me from inside the Bohemian Grove while he was servicing the elites. And it would come up on my call waiting, Bohemian Grove. <laughs> man, I mean, that oh, man. creeps you out. Pain, wow. man, what they do. What do you what, think? They're this? so cocky, too. That's what it's all about. They're just the cockiest people you'll ever run into. Yeah, I, we see and we feel that there is some kind of change coming where where those people are slowly being exposed. And well, awareness. Yeah. It's an awareness thing. Like, these people are going to go ahead and do their gruesome thing. But I think the best thing that we could do as a band right now is just make people aware of this bullshit. Yeah. And it's deep bullshit, too. But let's talk about that. i got to take a break here. We'll talk about that in the next segment. It's really important. Does life imitate art? Does art imitate life? And is the cultural revolution more potent and more significant than the so-called left-right political I solution? think so. Was, I really do think it so. It was in China around. back when China We'll do that when we come back. Helios Creed and Luminati from Chrome with us. This is the Jack Blood Show. Stay with us. Out of those twelve tribes, or rather those twelve apostles represented in those twelve tribes, he chose one. We will find out his, his name later. So he gathers these new people around himself in order to renovate and revivify. We of the new Kahar, we the new people of God, are only a branch that is grafted on to the tree. We are not the root. St. Paul foretells the day when the root will be glorified. When our Lord does come to use the word Kahal, he calls it my Kahal. I will found my church, my people. It's not a bond of, uh, not a bond of law. It's a bond of love. And the very best moment for establishing this bond was, of course, in banquet.
your mother up tight In a fire moon in winter She is my love Not the broad like a mess You're way on top Like a classic car A fireball is some old some new slave planet institution from the new record from chrome feel it like a scientist and some old school chrome firebomb all right helios creed and luminati from chrome they're about to tour europe they're about to hit chicago and then we'll talk them into coming and playing everywhere in the united states of america man the guys are just chomping at the bit to talk about the new world order of the illuminati the special elite and as much as i want to just talk about music all the time that's what you guys want to hear so that's what we're going to talk about when we left off we were asking questions and i do this with all the artists that come on the show does life imitate art does art imitate life and how important is the cultural revolution versus the so-called alleged news political revolution. Guys, thanks again for being with us. So those are the questions, and I think they're important questions. Yeah, I'm, it should be talked about all this stuff, especially now. I don't think there's a lot of time involved in their plans, so we got to make plans of our own, which is to, just to survive at mm. this point. Be human. Yeah. Who are they to decide billions of people's lives? That's the game they're playing, and that's the game we got to make people yeah. aware of. They don't have the right to make those decisions. Yeah, that's not what any any universal intelligence would want. Yeah, yeah it's the yeah. opposite. Of- it's it's uh you know it's way beyond Hitler. I like to say one <laughs> thing. When speaking of cultural revolution, like you have to look for where these things come from. And I recently watched the the, the HBO show True Detective, and I felt that there is a very thinly veiled reference to exactly the kind of things we're talking about throughout that show. And uh, that gives me hope because you're starting to see what we're, what we're all against popping up sort of veiled in the media and in that sort of art imitates life. You know, so, so, Jack, I mean, how do you feel about what's, I mean, your, your whole show is all about conspiracies and all these different, different, you know, approaches. How do you feel about what's going on right now yourself? So I could just get a, you know what I mean? Well, sure. I mean, I think that, you know, we expect too much. We're not going to win the war in one day, but incrementally we have been making huge steps into what I call consensus. So, for instance, if you look at the anti-GMO movement right now, it encompasses people from all walks of life, whether they're from Occupy or from the Tea Party, or they're old or young, or they're black or white, or male or female or whatever, and they're all really hitting this hard. So it's cost Coca-Cola and Pepsi. People don't want to drink it anymore. They're finding out it's bad. You know, you put all of this in the scope with the legalization of marijuana in this country and the decriminalizing of drugs and and everything. And you can see we are making huge steps, but the media wants us to think we're losing. So my message is not that we're not losing. We're winning. It's just not as fast as people want. And the revolution you ask for isn't always the revolution you get. I mean, that's just how it is. I think we're winning. I really do. I wouldn't have said that a few months ago. Something's happening with people's awareness. I just think maybe the computer is helping. And poverty. But everybody's aware of what's going down. Yeah. You know? And and shows like this, the, the speed in which people could get information now is just if you're really on it and you really want to be a part of the new the new hope, whatever it is, to do our thing, you know. If there is a God, he could relax. We're going to do it. You know what I mean? 
the greatest publicist for for a god was artists like Michelangelo. So yeah. so I really truly believe if I'm answering the question for you, I really believe that life does imitate art. Now life is art, but at the same time the ideas that come, the general mass consensus ideas generally come from artists and not from politicians or people using political speak. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what the what their motives are are so different than an artist, you know. I mean, their their motives are just power, you know. So or, but the, also the strange catharsis of Jack evil, Kennedy. man. <laughs> There's a sinister sort of bend to this. I see it all the time in, in, in television and, and in media where they're just kind of dangling the carrot in front of most people, right? But those of us that are in the know are kind of, you know, taunted by this. this uh, I don't display. have a TV set, so I don't. Yeah, we yeah. stopped watching TV. Yeah, we stopped watching TV. We have All we have is computers, so I don't watch TV anymore. You got to program yourself, as you know. Yeah, and I feel a lot better not having that. It's almost as if the, you know, I feel like I'm getting bombarded with brainwashing frequencies, and I probably am. <laughs> yeah, big time. No, well, and listen, we did the same thing, and it's interesting when you have to choose your entertainment, how much more choosier you are, rather than just flicking the channel and let something play. No, I can't do that anymore, and it was really bothering me, and I started feeling controlled, although I would like something to chill with when I get home. <laughs> so I have it worked out with the computer as my new TV. I don't even watch TV. I, I, I think I broke a few TVs you know, <laughs> when, when the commercials started playing, you know, in motels and stuff. <laughs> The biggest story in TV this week or last few weeks has been you're a racist and you hate gays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sterling and all that? His name is Donald Tokowitz, but let's not uh, split hairs. Uh, I don't know who that is. Who is that? I don't I have no clue, but I mean... So it, no, Donald gay. Sterling owns the Clippers, but his real name is Donald Tokowitz. He changed his oh. name, and really what we found out through the recordings, which, you know, were done in his private residence. I don't want to get into this too much, but the, the, because my, I talk about it on my show. Really what we found out was, you know, hardcore Torah Jews really just hate everyone that isn't one of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's too bad, isn't it? Uh. <laughs> but the thing is that he's got that same attitude where it's like, you know, it should be about doing good in the world, not just raking in money and, and, and treating people as if they were disposable. You well, know? it's getting to the point where you got to rake in the money just to even be here. Even in a life, yeah. <laughs> it's tough. I feel that that story is being put it's out questionable in front of a lot, whether you know? a lot of people could stay good. <laughs> there's, there's a lot else. I feel like they're, they're pushing, the, the mainstream media is going to be pushing all these different stories really to cover up this this child pornography ring. And that's my theory about what's happening now. Is it, so it's a dis it's a media distraction to keep our eye off the ball. It's not just that, but it's exactly. the war that they're trying to get back in Syria. It's what's going on in Kiev, the Ukraine, which those are fantastic people. You should go play a big protest uh, over there. You might have to dodge a few bombs. Asked, yeah. but we're asked to play in a lot of those places, and I'm yeah. totally into it. You know, I'm we totally... gotta play Russia. I, yeah, we're into playing Russia as much as we can. I'm totally just into uh, making people as aware. Yeah. You know, everybody at least have an equal chance, and to have that, you got to be aware of certain things, you know? Yeah. Make them aware of their freedom, their true freedom that can't be contained. Oh. And unfortunately, economically is, is... What do you think about being the kind of show you got? What do you think about the internment camps that supposedly are being built all over the country. And what is all that about? And I've been reading a lot yeah, about Yeah, Homeland that. Security, contracted yeah. Halliburton, of all people. We know them from Dick Cheney and, and everything. That's and they're tough. a global company. And they contracted them and gave them billions of your dollars or your children's yeah. dollars or their grandchildren's dollars to build these internment camps all over the place. I lived pretty close to one in Austin, Texas when I lived there. That's where I moved from. There's and enough internment camps to put half the population in this shit, right? But they can't do it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, we're we're not going to go willingly. But what what are they doing with all this shit? What are they going to try to do with it? You know, maybe something good will be done. With it I, I think, taken back. 
I think they wanted to use him before this time, but they never got it together. No, know? I love how you're interviewing me now, Helios. But <laughs> Stop doing that. No, no, it's okay. I'll, I'll answer the question. They are wargaming for a civil war in the United States of America and political unrest due to the collapse of the economy, and they are bringing and training foreign troops and training uh, even our troops in foreign lands to, to lock people up. I just don't think they'll get away with it. Yeah, that's I, what we're pulling for, man. They, that's they what we're working on. They we're not gonna not. let. We're not gonna let this yeah. happen. You know, people what I mean? need to be. It's like 1984 all over again, like it always is. But it's like we gotta be. We gotta go out and be that little bit of flash of you know, snap in the face to sort of like, hey, man, this is this could change. People are so apathetic, unfortunately, because of all this. Well, they got all the players in place for all this shit to happen. But they needed big disaster so they could control, you know, Marsh to bring in the martial, yeah, martial law, law is what I'm, I'm, I'm hearing. But there has been no big natural disaster big enough to where they can do that. That's well, actually, that. actually, though, we look back in New Orleans and Katrina, they did it, and they did it in Boston when they were looking for the alleged, and I mean alleged Boston yeah, bombers. Yeah, they, they, they practiced it, huh? Yeah. They, again, so they do, what they do is they say, oh, there's an exercise in that area, right? They do things like that. So they're, they're creating this fiction and then, you know what I, you see what I mean by that? Like, yeah. And, and all... to protect FEMA 3, you know, for some reason, they're really concerned about FEMA 3. There's a lot of energy in that area. You well, the know? truth is, I don't live in the United States. I live in the North American Union. I don't even live in Atlanta. I lived in the Federal Reserve Sector 6 section. So, I mean, let's all, let's, let's cut the bullshit. <laughs> Wow! Did great. you uh, did you move out of the country for reasons of uh, like pressure from any outside entity? No, I still live in the United States technically, but it's not. It's the North American Union. In fact, it's beyond the North American Union. And you know, do you realize that they didn't tell the Europeans where you guys are going to tour? A big tour, Chrome, Helios ah. Creed, Luminati, going to Europe any day now. You guys got to all check them out. And I know you love them after listening to the last uh, half hour or so of playing, <laughs> but. No, they didn't tell the Europeans that they were in the European Union until 1987, but in 2003, they had their 50th anniversary. Do the math. Ah, uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, gotcha. 57. They got... What year was Kennedy shot? November 22nd, 1963, the same day, the same day that Aldous Huxley died, the author of Brave New World. The exact same day. A couple weeks before he died, he... I saw President Kennedy look right at me and smiled, and I got a really good feeling. I mean, how many presidents look at a kid and smile, you know? I got a good feeling about that guy, and then two weeks later he died. I was in third grade, and everybody in the country was crying. Everybody. They broke our hearts, man. Yeah. It was a massive, that that was a bad trip. Massive consciousness shift. He was the last good president. It's like the bad trip's already happening. We're trying to snap out of it. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know much about politics, but I I believe that guy was a good man. You know what I mean? He tried to warn everyone about what we're talking about. He spoke out. Well, yeah. He he spoke out about the conspiracy unions and that if we don't keep an eye on these fuckers, they're going to take over and we can't have that happen. Well, it happened. Yeah, I think JFK should be, he should be looked upon as someone who tried who do who tried to be the right kind of person and say, wait a second, this country, this world is slipping this way and he wanted to warn us about it and he paid the ultimate price. You know, he's really martyred to I mean, uh, from what I know, I'm sure he had his escapades. Of course, everyone. Well, well so. let's hold on a second. He comes from an, he comes from an Illuminati family. He he didn't come in good, but he did go out good, and that's what it did. And actually, when you say sacrifice, Lou, you're exactly right because there's a ceremony called the killing of the king, and a lot of people believe that was part of the sacrifice, literally a ritual sacrifice for the world for John F. Kennedy. Uh- I've never heard about that. Yeah. Well, know. they love to do it out in plain sight. You know what? I When I was a kid, I was thinking. I go, why in the hell, if this guy's so important, anybody could take a crack shot at him? Even as a kid, I thought about that. And before 9-11, I go, these doors on the airplane, man, I could fucking push this door in like a cardboard box and take this plane over. <laughs> and I'm not sure if that's what happened in 9-11. I don't know what fuck happened i wasn't a bit surprised yeah when i woke up that morning i said what do they think's gonna happen if they try to run the world like this but i still believe. i mean you can't get to a train engineer you can't get to a sea captain 
but you could anybody could get to a cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> Not allowed to have guns on a plane, and it all starts there. And we've done a lot of work on 9-11. That's one of the things I was going to ask you about. Even the 9-11 Commission, or the CFR Whitewash Commission, as we oh, call it, it was even the guys, Keene and Hamilton, that ran. The, first, they tried to put Henry Kissinger in charge of it, and that wouldn't fly. But then they put Keene and Hamilton in charge, and those guys both came out and said, one, they were doomed to fail, they were set up to fail, and two, that they would have brought up the guys from the Pentagon on perjury charges because they knew they were all lying. So it doesn't matter that we know what happened, and I have a pretty good idea what happened. I think it was you know remote controlled and that kind of a thing. They hacked into it just like they do every day now for everything that reporter Michael Hastings in California that crashed his car. You know, I mean, you can you can do all of that. You can hack into my computer right now. You can hack into cell phones. Apple has a back door now. They can shut off your cell phone so you can't tape the police. I mean, this is just uh-huh. rudimentary. What do you think about the theory of the large scale hologram uh, that they're like, what's yeah. no point? Yeah, right? No, nah, it's bullshit. You think it's bullshit? Yeah. I know it is. What are you talking about? Oh, it's just like they say that, like, oh, maybe they, they well, no, they had to use a real plane, but like, Maybe they created. A, they have the technology apparently to create. Oh no, something. it was a real plane. All right. Well, no, no not way. not in not in the Pentagon though. That was well, shit. people seen it and they took videos of yeah. it. So yeah, it was real plane. The simplest answer is usually true. You guys know That's that. That's a great point, Jack. Theorem. That's a great point. It's a great way to think. Why not I'm use a plane? I've got to talk some time when we're not doing yeah. an interview and just you know I like your show. You know. Yeah, we'll have to see you on our U.S. tour. Yeah. Well, God or damn it. And then, and then I think you have to have a stomach pump. My band is still together. And if you know, uh, if you know my, my brother Leighton, who knows more than all of us about the Illuminati from the Throne Ups, he's my guitar player. Yeah. I love oh, the Throne Ups. together, man. <laughs> Where, what city are you in? I'm in Atlanta, but if we can open for Helios Creed, we'll go wherever you want us to. All right. Well, let's <laughs> make it so. Whoever's listening, make it yeah, so. Yeah. Let's, let's do some shows with you when we get back, you know. All right, we're going to take a quick break here. We'll come back. One more quick segment with Helios Creed and Illuminati from Chrome. Stay with us. This is Jack Blood Show.
Your skin feels rubbed and chafed. Your heart, sticky. Your skin feels rubbed and chafed. Your heart, sticky. Your skin feels rubbed and chafed. Your heart, Dim brewed carbonation. Sticky. Your all skin popular feels rubbed beers rubbed in America and only butter. Your heart, sticky. Your skin feels rubbed and chafed. Your heart, Dim brewed sticky. carbonation. Your skin all feels popular rubbed and chafed. Beers in America and only butter. Your heart, sticky. Your skin feels rubbed and chafed. Soggy feet. Your heart itching. Sticky. Burning. Your skin feels rubbed and chafed. Damn hot. Soggy. Once again, some old, some new. First you heard Unbreakable Fluoride Lithium Plastic from 2014, Chrome. The new CD, Feel It Like a Scientist, they're touring Europe right now. 
And then, of course, you just heard Danger Zone from 1981, early Chrome. Helios Creed and guitarist Lou Minotti with us from Chrome. This is the Jack Blood Show. Without naming names, perhaps. Yeah. We name names on this show. It's the Jack Blood ah! Show, of course, as always. DeadlineLive.info, RadioFreeBlood.com. And as always, we thank all the affiliates and the people that just put this stuff out forever and ever and ever. Hey, man, Helios Creed with us, Luminati with us. The band is Chrome. They are the first industrial punk rock band, experience band ever, back from the 70s. They've been playing all these years. If you missed it, you're absolutely going to love what you're going to find in the Chrome archives and the Helios Creed archives. They're coming to Europe right now. So if you're in Europe, go check out Chrome. Uh, give out the website, guys, so people can find the tour schedule. Uh, I did Oh, shit. Is it, well, we're on uh, Facebook, uh, although Facebook is what it is, and that's kind you of our main... Facebook right now. That's our main place Let's for tell the show. Let's tell them the tour dates. Okay, okay. Yeah. Just, I'll do it for you. Helios, H-E-L-I-O-S dash creed dot com, and it's all right there, too. Oh, okay. And you're on Facebook. That's awesome. Yeah, and he shares the information that we're discussing constantly. Like, that's what, yeah. you know, we do that. We always have the tour dates up, and I'll even put it up better. You inspired me to do more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, L- Luminati is. Um, you've joined the band. I mean, this is a, yeah, like a historic band. It must be really cool for you to just come in and be able to jam with these guys and play live with these oh. people. Give us a little take on how it is to to be absorbed into the Chrome family. It's basically like uh, having your life become a Philip K. Dick novel. <laughs> In a good way, because when this happened, see, uh, the Los and I here found each other living in a weird little town called Santa Cruz, California, and I was like the only person in town that knew who he was. I walked up to him down the street. I said, hey, you know, let's get together. And He course, called my name. He goes, Helios. And I didn't know who in the fuck knows me here. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I said, who's that? And I'm thinking, hey, can we open for you? If you want to do a show in town, I'll help set it up. But we just started hanging out. And, and, you know, I was going through these transitions. You know, I'm a sound engineer and I have a career of my own, but like, this became the ultimate expression of, of what, A, as a fan who, who previously kind of absorbed this guy's style into my own music of the past. And, uh, he looked at me and said, you're a great guitar player, dude. And, uh, I want to, you know, get you in. And yeah, I asked him if he joined a band and he said he would and, and I he's thought, been in a band ever since. And I thought, know? now my life has a bigger purpose, you know, and, and, and the people, it's just like it's just the, like he calls it the alchemy of, of of our combination of people involved, and it's every person serves this psychic role. That's that's. I amazing. feel we got yeah. the perfect alchemy now for the live show yeah, with, so, the, with the band we got. So it's really going to be good. Yeah, really going to be. Good. We've become friends for life. This we're, we're yeah. this guy's twice my age, but we spend and and you really can't here. do Chrome properly without two guitars. Yeah. You know, at least on stage. Not, not like you know. I want it to sound as good, if not better, than the records. You know, I'm really serious. Well, let's talk about that, and I want to go back. You know, we'll end up on an official message, so to speak. But <laughs> let, let's go back and talk about how how music has changed. Not not from the Justin Bieber angle of the Partridge. We covered that one. Okay, thanks, folks. Uh, we did that for you. But. <laughs> But te- te- and technology wise, how it's changed because I used to man, I used to get this this worn out tape on an echoplex, and I could get the greatest sound. Now I guess I can punch it ten buttons if I know which ones to punch, and I could make that happen digitally. But so talk about that for a minute, just the, the whole uh, advent of technology as it applies to art. It's moving so fast. Supposedly, you could get that echo plug sound just off your computer, and people say it's just as good as having an echo plug. Now, I can't say yes or no about that. It's going so fast, I haven't dabbled in it enough to give you an answer, but I think it's amazing, and I love it, you know, because... The more I learn on the computer, I mean, I could do all my shit right here at home and have my studio. I mean, it's it's just beautiful, you know, to be able to do that. I could say a word about that and, as well. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. Oh, well, um, it's kind of a funny story. My friend Greg from this band called Smash Mouth that was located out of this area. Everyone knows who they are. And uh, I went to his place one time. We were hanging, and, and he points to his Pro Tools rig. He's just like, that's just a tape machine. you got to treat that as if it's just 
what it used to be, you know, and, and learn the old techniques of how things were done. Like I read Phil Spector's biography to, to school myself on things. I learned production tricks from him and in the studio, just combine the classic way with the current tools, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, the thing about computer for me is I, I'm still in the tape zone. We even use some tape on the new album mm-hmm. only because there's no way for what we, I'm not going to, you know, pop your bubble and tell you what we did, but, I'll tell you, it was a backwards thing. Well, the backwards thing we use, there's no way it would sound like that if it was done through the computer. No way on yeah. earth. And it was, it was actually, you know what I mean? We revealed that it was the master from Angel of the Clouds, the previous Al- Chrome album that was dedicated to Damon Ash. No, actually, it was a Helios Creed album. Oh, was it? took it off. I, yeah. So I, it was <laughs> sitting on the reel yeah. right in front of us for months. So I go, we need something for this song, and I turned it on. And I flipped the tape over to make it go backwards. And it got to that point. I go, that's perfect. That's exactly what we need. And it just fell into place. Uh, Feel it like a scientist by Chrome. It's yeah. the new album out. And you can get it online. Or you can phys- – I, pr- I promote physically buying things. Buy their T-shirt. Okay. Vote with your dollars. Buy their merchandise. Buy tickets. Go to the show. They're coming uh, to Europe right now. That's great. Yeah, we, you probably – have you heard any of it? Yes, and I'm blown away. I, I'm so addicted to it. I am so loving this. Really? We put out an addicting album. That's fucking, uh, pardon me, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> it's a healthy addiction. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. let me go back because I just actually recorded our, like, fourth uh, record with Jack and Dino, who I oh, know you wow. know. Oh, Jack, wonderful. And he's amazing. And, and on the issue of technology, he's like, well, what stupid you know, engineer doesn't have a digital board and all that, you know, I mean, don't hold on to the past, but he does record things that are analog and makes them digital, but the other thing he said, and I want to transition into this, was that, you know, he used to record everything, and he knew everyone, people were going to hear it, now he records stuff, and he goes, I don't know if anyone's even going to hear it, it just gets recorded and kind of put into this giant can we call the internet or SoundCloud or whatever, and he's not even sure that stuff he records is even heard anymore and that's that's the whole new thing uh, a strategy that's not been invented yet there is no marketing plan there is no way to monetize it it's ahead of the curve and that is how we get our music out to people and still you know maybe make a living yeah that's a good i was thinking about that today it's so funny you <laughs> we brought think about it up. that every day <laughs> well it was like how do people like well, we're still going to go out. We're still going to sell records, you know, plastic, you know. Yeah. I love records. You love records. We all love records, you know. We're still going to have CDs, but it's it's just not the same. Things are moving so fast. Yeah. To make a living off of it, like the old the old school way, it's just not going to, you know. Or you just got to live really simply, which we do. So, Jack, if you figure it out, let me know because <laughs> uh, that's, that's – Well, I'll tell you what. I – I had Bruce Pavitt on, not to keep dropping names, but he just actually did the show not too long ago, the the founder of Sub Pop, and and we asked him the same question. I know Bruce. And, <laughs> and what he was saying was, is no, no bad stories. What he was saying was... No bad, <laughs> I love Bruce. <laughs> oh, man. I just had on, uh, I don't know if you remember when when White Zombie first started and Tom Five was in the band, but I just uh-huh. had him on, and he's a friend of mine, and he told some crazy the stories of early the early days and it, it involved the sub pop and Bruce Pavitt. But but the the essence of it is what I was saying, you know, when you're on the internet you can really get more promotion. So if you're good at, at it, you know, kind of you know, strapping to the thing, it's good. So now Mud Honey are playing every year for a hundred thousand people in Brazil and they're making a living whereas, you know, maybe they would have fizzled out if this was 10, 20 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you can take advantage of it, but it does kind of take a team of people to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We almost played that show, but what happened? You know, it, it was the, uh, the it was a government event that we were supposed to go play in Sao, Sao Paulo but right before Europe. And like, apparently they got the funding cup. That would have been great. To be yeah, yeah, down by yeah. A, we're we're trying to play the same yeah. game a little bit. What we're going to do is extend our tour in South America, you know what I mean, in theory, because 
then we can go there and play more cities than if we just had to bounce in and out and do Brazil. You can make a living just playing South America alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what we've been hearing about, and that's what we're totally into. You know, if America is going to support us, we'll go to where they will. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go uh, everywhere. It's just but, for us, the living is just having enough to be able to make more music in a way. But know? we do have we do have a U.S. tour coming up, so I don't yeah. want you people to think you're going to be left out. No, it's going to be you know. No, you you can go play Brazil for a hundred thousand people and make a million dollars or you can play one little gig at a time for 500 a thousand people in the united states i mean you know it's it's your choice yeah 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 <laughs> but you gotta, i would, you gotta, I would uh, like to make the money first and then come back and do a proper show for my friends but in the spirit of, <laughs> in the spirit of what we do which is you know we're we're, we're committed to doing art still it's like you got to share it to everybody so that everyone gets the message and everyone gets the you know everyone a, a shared consciousness experience you know yeah yeah all right, let's end but, up, let, let's know, end up on this. So, so you guys, you know, you talk about politics and and you're interested in the grand scheme of things. I'm not gonna like ply well, you for so solutions. Nice guys, just don't cross us. Yeah. Right? you know that's the <laughs> people cross us. We turn into not so nice. guys. Helios is about six foot five, and yeah, uh, I wouldn't. Uh, like big yeah. guy and a little guy. <laughs> yeah, they, it's always the scariest when you have a big guy and a little guy. Helios will pick up Lou Minotti and he'll swing him around like a bat. Uh, that's like Master, like blaster. master <laughs> blaster. I swear to God, we're Master Blaster. Yeah. You know, under the ground. That has finally materialized. The song has finally materialized in my life. <laughs> Uh, pun intended. So let me yeah, get let me yeah. end up on this. This is like what I was talking about on my live show today was that the Mexican drug cartels, which we know are pretty much owned by the elite, is they're protecting them, and that's that's just like go watch American Drug War, the movie by Bill Hicks, Frank, Kevin Booth, and you'll know all of that. But but they say now that the legalization and the medication using pot for medicine and all of the, the advances that we've had in the I last few few tough. years have been killing the Mexican cartels. They're uh, good. Uh, right I want to kill them. They're evil mothers. They kill women, man. Anyone who kills they, women. They, is so they, they do bad things to women and kids, and yeah. I can't stand for it's that. It's the basic evil, man. I mean, but that's it's too a good bad thing. All of, you know, drugs, but <laughs> that's drugs, a good drugs, thing. Drugs. When when the old people die of their pharmaceuticals here in a few years, I mean, the rest oh, of us can terrible. just sit around and smoke pot, and and then we'll break the cartels. I found yeah. out that they're making a new drug that is prescription, and it is like morphine and oxycontin combined. I mean, what are they doing to people? You know? Yeah, it's not a new it's, drug. It's disgusting. Hey, what are the troops doing in Afghanistan right now? What do you think? Guarding I, the poppy fields? <laughs> Probably getting killed. Guarding the poppy fields or no? Uh, no, they're just they're just out there turning the gears because that's what makes the money is just having the thing moving. You know, they're just it's, they're, it's like. No, I never did know what is that war about anyway. Supposedly, I know there's no real reason, but Harmit Karzai was a big muckety muck at Unical. And now he's president of Kabul, and they're growing bumper poppy crops, uh, opium crops wow. there, and and it's kind of a corridor for everything else. Record, yeah, a nice so poppy field. I think it's good advice to tell everyone not to do heroin, you know, <laughs> because yeah. it comes Don't from a bad place. Don't support that shit, you know. you know. God put the green herb. You know what we're talking about. <laughs> Finally, uh, I want to get your take on this. So, you know, who votes in presidential elections anymore? Half the population is stupid, apparently, but oh. because there's never a choice. But this is actually the choice they're lining up to give us, and they think we're going to swallow it and we're going to take it, uh, pun intended. And that is it will be Clinton versus Bush in 2016. Do you guys think that people no, will stand kidding. for this? Wow. Clinton and uh, – wait a second. You mean uh, Hillary Clinton? Or George? Or <laughs> no, actually, her name is Hillary Clinton, and oh, uh, yeah. Hillary versus Jeb in 2016. Oh, no, all no, all no, the no, money no. is going there. Oh, dude, there's gonna be fried chicken at the podium for Jeb Bush. That's all. I I, I I don't know, man. It's just time to. I think I like the idea of living in another country. I heard a great term, a great analogy that that even a politician was quoted saying. It's like pro wrestling, you know. It's just the, the behind the scenes. It's all a locker room game. You know? I mean, who, I know this is the first time I've heard of that, but I'm, I imagine the the information's pretty read, readily available. Oh yeah, available. totally. No, I mean, actually, I I was so good at this. I I predicted it several years ago, but here it is again. Clintons and Bushes, Bushes and Clintons, and um and what do you think about the fact that 
that Obama is cousins with Bush, cousins with Clinton, cousins with Rockefeller, cousins with Palin, cousins even with Mitt Romney, and this is all a matter of public record. What about the Rothschild? Well, no wonder he's president. <laughs> and it's like, again, you can't believe in coincidence. I mean, what the heck is that? Like, Well, aren't they all family ever since the Egyptian days? I mean, running the world. There it is. There it is. And that's why I want a world tour, Pussy Riot, and Chrome playing oh, everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would it's be time. Amazing. It's time. Yeah. Hey, we'll hang with Pussy Riot anytime. <laughs> yeah, it's time we brought it. I hope, I hope they're getting out, man. We need to go play for their it's, cause. It's maybe. time to spread the information and break yeah. down on all the walls. We've been the, talking about this for, you know. The war is on, <laughs> yeah. definitely, man. But now our war is on, you know. You know, we're, we're fucking fired up. Yeah. We're going to play as hard as we can. We're going to just get out and do and, it. And we advise every band that's worth their salt to do the same. And it seems they are because there's so many bands coming yeah. back. And think about it. A musical you know. event is a gathering of people for a common purpose, even if it's just entertainment. And it could be what we're talking about, culturally a revolution of people just getting together. And, yeah, there has to be something. Yeah. Um, I mean, have you noticed that being in that there's a whole bunch of bands just coming back. Well, look, I mean it's it turned from the from the financial end of playing music to now the cultural revolution and yeah, we needed yeah. that. We I've been pushing this for 10 or 15 years and I'm glad it's finally happening. Yeah, yeah. it's happening now and it's psychedelic based in Europe I hear really big oh, time. Oh yeah, it's going to be. So it's great for chrome and it's a great time for us to put in our two cents. Yeah. And what is our two cents is Everything that you've been talking about forever, you know? Hope, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's because we can, not yes we can, because we can. Feel yeah, yeah. it like a scientist by Chrome. You guys can find it anywhere. They're about to go to Europe, so all of our European listeners, it starts literally the, the day you hear this. We're going to publish this, I think, tomorrow. So it starts on the 14th. Aren't you guys supposed to be in Germany already? Or what, what, what? No, no, no. I think there's a mistake probably. Maybe that's an old schedule, but we're playing. We're, we're flying out on uh, Sunday. Yeah, on the 19th, we're leaving. Our first show is on the 21st. In Munich. In Munich. So there it um, is. You are going to burn Europe down. People are going to love you. I know you got a lot of hardcore fans out there, just tons of them. I expect those shows. Wanna, those shows are going to be great. Disappointing either. Yeah, we look forward to all of it, man. Yeah, I want come I want, and talk to us. We're, we're you know we're looking forward to that. I, I imagine some of these shows are going to be monumental. You know what I mean? Yeah. Once we get tight, you know what I mean? Well, you're playing at Baloney Freakout, and you're playing at Berlin Babylon, so I, I guarantee you some pretty good freakouts in those places. Yeah, I can't wait, bro. I can't wait. Helios Creed, Chrome, uh, Luminati, guitar for Chrome. Uh, anything you guys want to put on the record before we cut out? Well, um, if if you don't go, you're just going to miss the show of a lifetime because I can't say it's ever going to happen again. Every show's like that. Yeah. So you guys got to get out, you know. Let your laptop and your computer home. Come out and enjoy the people and have fun with us. Yeah. Let's let's organize some hope for people there for a change, go. you know. <laughs> you got to get together now. That'll be the next presidential. Hope for a change, not hope and change. <laughs> uh, yeah. You nailed it. Helios-creed.com. Just put Chrome... In any Love search engine, from, guys. go ahead, hit YouTube and hit Chrome if you don't know what we're talking about. I know you're going to love the music we played. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate you spending time with me. I wish I could go with you the whole way to Europe, man. I know what a blast it's going to be. Just come home alive, okay? Call us any time. You got my number, yeah, right? Keep in touch. <laughs>
That is the new Chrome. Feel it like a scientist playing Europe right now, coming back and playing the United States in all points around the world. Thank you, Helios Creed. Thank you, Luminati. Till then, this is Jack Blood, your radio gun, as always, saying, be bold and mighty forces will come to your aid. <laughs>